Hey, what's going on today, guys? Today, we're going to be doing an upgrade video on this mining rig we built over three months ago. As you saw in our most recent video, we did add another shelf onto the top here, and that brings the total capacity of video cards of this rig up to 16 GPUs. Currently, we have nine GPUs connected, and that's obviously putting a lot of stress on the current power supply, which is the Corsair AX 1500i. So we went out and purchased this new HX1000 power supply by Corsair. That's gonna bring the total power capacity delivery of this rig up to 2,500 watts. So in addition to that, we also purchased two more video cards. Uh, one of them is the RTX 3070 Ventus Edition by MSI. And the other one is already connected to the rig there. So with that additional hardware being added onto this rig, the total hash rate is gonna be brought up to 400 mega hash per second on Ethereum. That's roughly the equivalent to 1200 US dollars a month based off of the current difficulty in March, 2021. So without further ado, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you. So to start the video off, I'm gonna be unboxing the new hardware I purchased. First off, here's the Corsair HX1000 power supply. As you guys can tell by the name, it's going to add an additional 1000 watts of power to the rig. And as mentioned, that's going to bring the total power capacity of the rig up to 2500 watts. At first glance, I was actually surprised at how small this power supply is for this particular model. I mean, it's only 500 watts less than the AX1500i power supply, and yet it's nearly half the size. So the major downside in having a small power supply like this is that you don't get nearly as many ports and cables. I mean, looking at these cables here, really this is only enough to power four GPUs at most. But again, this was the best we could find in this dry market right now. I mean, virtually all the heavy duty power supplies like the Corsair AX1600i are sold out right now. So next up, here's me unboxing the MSI RTX 3070 Ventus Edition. It's a two fan variant. It has eight gigabytes of video memory and it can mine Ethereum at around 61 mega hash per second when overclocked. That's pretty impressive because as you can see there, it's roughly the same size as the GTX 1660 Ti and yet it does over double the mining performance of that card. As a result of this strong mining performance, it does require two 8-pin power connectors as you can see there. Before we decided to reconfigure the rig for the new hardware being added, we decided to give the old cards a quick spray with an electric duster. And yeah, it's totally worth it to get that old dust removed. It does nothing but cause inefficiencies in the long run. Alright, so we just finished adding the new hardware onto the rig. It's not really mounted securely right now, but that's just because we're doing some dry runs to make sure everything runs okay first. So yeah, as you can see here, we have an extension cord running to the new power supply. That allows this rig to run on two different circuits now, which of course provides more headroom. And that will be beneficial in the future if we decide to add more cars onto this rig. For example, having it on two different circuits now provides a maximum headroom of 3600 watts. Of course, we won't go anywhere close to that, but that's a significant increase from what it was before, which was 1800 watts. So the initial dry runs were successful with this rig. We did put some conservative overclocks on it with MSI Afterburner 
and now the total hash rate is at 400 mega hash per second on Ethereum. Up at the top left there you can see three RTX 3070s. They're all the Ventus edition by MSI. One thing I want to mention about the 3070s is to not be fooled by their small size. After all, according to the software they're drawing around 180 watts each. Down at the bottom here we first have the RTX 2070 Windforce Edition by Gigabyte. And then the four cores to the right of them are GTX 1660 Ti's by Gigabyte as well. The very last cards you can see on the far right are both GTX 1660 Supers by MSI. Here you can see the newly installed Corsair HX1000 power supply. It's connected to four of the cards on the far right as well as the motherboard. It's also apparent that the fan is not spinning on it. That's because it's not programmed to turn on until it exceeds 40% load. Now as you get toward the center you can see the SSC as well as the motherboard. The motherboard is an ASUS B250 Mining Expert. It has 19 PCI slots and you can see the risers connected to them which extend to the GPUs throughout the rig. As you get to the far left you can see the other power supply. It's the Corsair AX1500i. It's apparent on this one that the fan is spinning. That means it's drawing more than 40% load which means the components connected to it are drawing more than 600 watts. You can see as part of the dry run I did temporarily connect both of the power supplies to one circuit. This was so I could get an accurate reading of the power draw for the entire rig itself. You can see at the wall there it's drawing around 1350 watts on average. Now if you take into consideration the total hash rate which is 400 mega hash per second and then divide it by the power draw. You get a ratio of 0.3 mega hash per second per watt, which again is pretty good because most of the cards on this rig are cheap ones like the GTX 1660 Ti. So here in the thermal imaging you can see where the core heat is being generated. I mean it really does paint a clear picture of how serious the heat output is of this rig. But as I mentioned in my other videos these rigs do substitute as a very good space heater for Vancouver apartments when it's the middle of winter time. You can see at the top left there where the hottest cards are which are the three RTX 3070s. It differentiates pretty well the low power draw cards versus the high ones. And yeah there's a HX1000 power supply right there. And then in the center there you can see the motherboard as well as the other components. They really don't produce that much heat, that's because it's using an SSD, as well as I opted for the CPU which uses minimal power which is an Intel Celeron dual core. Anyway guys, so I guess this wraps up the video. I had a lot of fun modifying the rig as well as it was fun editing this video and learning new things. Uh, so anyway, I wish you all the best luck in your future mining builds. Goodbye now.